Today we're going to optimize aluminum foil boats to hold as many pennies as possible. We will look at three common shapes, a canoe, a cube, and a sphere. Which one do you think will hold the most? The first thing we're going to do is estimate the maximum volume that we can get for each shape of boat that we're going to make. To estimate a canoe, we will use a triangular prism. The volume of this shape is 1 half base times height, so that's the triangle, and then multiplying by the length will give us the volume of the prism. For all these experiments, we'll start with a 2D flat sheet of aluminum foil. When we fold the shape, we'll lose some of the surface to folding, and that's shown here in the shaded region. These lines show how I'm going to fold the aluminum foil to make the canoe. So we can see that L is this middle region, and then we're going to fold up both sides, so that gives us H on either side. And then the base of the triangle is going to be the entire one side. I'm using a 4 inch by 4 inch piece of aluminum foil, so with this we can write down two equations. The first is that 4 equals 2h plus l, and the second is b equals 4. Then we can substitute this back into the volume equation and get volume with a single variable, which here I've chosen to be h. Now we want to plot this, so to do that I wrote up a little bit of Python code, and you can see here that when I run the code I get a plot. And I also have it output the values for the maximum volume, which is 4 inches cubed, and then the length where we get that, which is 2 inches. You can see that these results match with the plot, and so this is our approximate solution. For a cube, the water will come up to some height, which we'll label as h, and the base will be length times length. Our volume will be V equals L squared times H. When we fold the aluminum foil, we'll lose the corners. We can define the height and the length and the height here, which again is going to be equal to 4 inches. Using that equation, we can solve H in terms of L and then substitute that back into the volume equation. So now we have volume as a function of a single variable, which is length. I'm going to multiply this out and show you guys a different way that we can find the maximum volume. Last time we plotted volume as a function of its variable to get an approximate solution. This time we're going to use calculus to get an exact solution. When you plot volume as a function of length, you'll get some curve and it will have a maximum. To find the slope of a line, you can take the derivative, and if we take the derivative at the maximum value, our slope is going to be equal to zero. If we take the derivative and set it equal to zero, we can solve for length. We get two solutions, zero, which is the null case, which isn't interesting so we'll ignore it, and eight-thirds. We can plug 8 thirds back into our second equation to solve for the height. Then we can use both of these values to solve for the volume, which comes out to 4.74 inches cubed. We can double check our calculus by putting this into Python and checking the approximate solution. So what we see here is that our length, where we get the maximum volume, is 2.67 inches which, if you convert that into a fraction, is 8 thirds. So this verifies that we did the calculus correctly. The sphere is a bit more complicated because we're looking at only a portion of the sphere, which is known as a spherical cap. To make this shape, we're going to fold the foil so the longest end to end is 4 inches. So that will be this entire part of the spherical cap. Now I'm going to define arc length, which will be represented by s, as well as theta. The volume of a spherical cap is defined as pi over 3 times r cubed times 2 plus cosine theta 
times 1 minus cosine theta quantity squared. Then we can define theta as arc length divided by the radius. We can plug theta into the volume equation. So now volume is in terms of radius as well as arc length. And since we're using a 4 inch by 4 inch piece of aluminum foil, we know that S is going to be 2 inches. So now we have volume as a function of a single variable, which will be the radius, and we can use our approximate solution to find the maximum volume as well as the radius at the maximum volume. So for the spherical cap, we have a maximum volume of 4.66 inches cubed, and that's at a radius of 1.64 inches. Now that we know the maximum volume for each shape, how do we figure out how many pennies each boat can hold? First, we need to understand what makes a boat or any object float. When you place an object in water, it displaces some amount of the water. There are two forces acting on the object. We have gravity, which is pulling it down, and then the buoyant force, which is pushing it up. So let's define those. The buoyant force is equal to minus dGv. So the minus here comes from the fact that the buoyant force is in the upward direction. We generally consider forces down being positive because of gravity. D is the letter that I'm going to use for the density of fluid. G is the gravitational acceleration, which is a constant and V is the volume of displaced fluid. The gravitational force is equal to the mass of the object times the gravitational acceleration. For an object to be in equilibrium or at rest, the forces acting on it must cancel out. So we have Fg equals Fb. We can rewrite these as the mass of the boat times G, is equal to the density of water times g times the volume of the boat. As we load pennies, we'll increase the mass of the boat, and then the displaced volume will also increase. However, we're only interested in the maximum number of pennies, so we'll assume the maximum amount of displaced water, which will be the volume of the entire boat. We can divide this entire equation by g, which will eliminate that from both sides. Then we can redefine the mass of the boat as the mass of its components. So this will be the mass of air in the boat, plus the mass of all the pennies, plus the mass of the foil. The right-hand side of the equation will remain the same. Then we can redefine mass in terms of density. So we know that density equals mass divided by volume, and we can rewrite the left side of the equation by substituting density times volume for mass. And for the mass of the pennies, we'll define the mass of a single penny and multiply that times capital N, which will be the number of pennies. The right-hand side will remain the same. But now we can define the volume of the boat as its subcomponent. So the volume of the air in the boat plus the volume of a penny times the number of pennies plus the volume of the foil. We're going to use this equation to substitute in for VA, which is the volume of air, since that's something that's difficult to measure. So we'll keep VB in the equation, but we're going to use this to eliminate VA. Now that we have the equation with the variable n, we're going to solve for n since we're interested in the number of pennies in the boat. I'm going to eliminate the foil here because it's pretty small and I didn't measure it. Now that we've defined the number of pennies, the equation looks kind of complicated. But everything in the box is either something that we can look up the value for or measure it. So what we really have is the number of pennies is equal to the volume of the boat times a constant. 
since I've eliminated the FOIL in the calculation, we're assuming this is the maximum, so the number of pennies will be less than or equal to n. Now we have the number of pennies in terms of volume, so we can use the volumes we calculated earlier to plug in and find n. Since the equation for n is in the units of centimeters cubed, I need to convert this back into inches. And so for the canoe, we see that n is equal to 26.21 pennies, but n must be an integer because we're not using pieces of pennies. So for all these values, we need to round down. So the estimate for the number of pennies in the canoe is 26. On the right hand side here, I'm gonna put the dimensions for each shape. So when we're ready to build, we know what dimensions to use. The estimate for the number of pennies in the cube is 31, but that one's really close. And so I'm guessing it's actually gonna be one penny less. And then for the sphere, we have an estimate of 30. The first shape I'm gonna make is the canoe. With this boat, when you put it in water, it likes to tip to one side. So I'm gonna hold on to it while I load the first few pennies, just to make sure it doesn't fall over. With eight pennies inside, you can see that the wall starts to lean in, which is not good news for us. 22, 23. Oh no. So this is less pennies than we predicted. Let's try the cube and see how that shape goes. For the cube, loading the pennies evenly is important so the boat doesn't tilt to one side since that would decrease our submerged volume. The walls start collapsing in. We saw this with the canoe as well. This is decreasing the volume inside our boat, so will result in less pennies. We got 28 before it sank on 29, which again is less than we predicted. Let's try the cube again, and this time I'll load the pennies in such a way so that they lean against the walls and prevent them from collapsing in. We're at 34 pennies and I start to see that the top left corner is getting close to the surface of the water because the water is starting to form around the top of the foil. So now we have 35, 36, 37, oh, and it goes down. This is actually more than we predicted and I have a feeling that it has to do with the surface tension that I started seeing when we got to around 34 pennies. Now for the sphere. I'm going to use something that has a spherical shape to just mold the aluminum foil around. The best thing with the closest radius I could find was a skein of yarn, but a ball would have been better. I'm trying to load the pennies as symmetrically as possible, but they kind of keep falling down, so it's a little difficult to do that. We get to 31 pennies and then it sinks on 32. So both the sphere and the cube had more pennies than we predicted. And I mentioned that this is due to surface tension. So let's look at that. We saw that surface tension can hold up our boats better than predicted. This comes from the fact that water has cohesive forces between its molecules and the molecules on the surface have stronger forces between each other because they don't have water above them to hold on to. 
This is seen in many examples, including a water strider. In this image, you can see the dimples it makes on the surface of the water, which is similar to what happened with our boat. Also, when water is on a surface like a leaf, it tends to create a spherical shape, and that's due to those cohesive forces that cause surface tension. Let's see how this relates to our boats by doing another experiment where we just take a flat sheet of aluminum foil, put it in the water, and see how many pennies it can hold. So we're up to nine, which is surprising. I didn't think it would hold this many. And on 14, it sinks. I'm surprised by how many pennies a flat sheet can hold, so let's look at how surface tension impacts our boats. When the boat is heavy enough that the water starts forming around the top almost like a dome, this increases the volume of the boat that is underwater. From our equation for n, we know that it's proportional to the volume, so this increased volume due to surface tension allows us to fit more pennies in our boat than predicted. Since the number of pennies didn't quite match my predictions, I decided to measure the boats I made to get a more accurate volume for each one. After doing this and plugging those values back into the equation for the number of pennies, I end up with two additional pennies for the cube, so an estimate of 32, five less pennies for the canoe, which brings it to 21, and three additional pennies for the sphere, which brings it up to 33. We saw that the number of pennies depended on how the pennies were loaded, and with the canoe and cube, we saw low numbers of pennies when the walls caved in. I did four trials for each shape to get a sense of the variability between attempts. The data for each trial is shown in the plot at the top, and then I've summarized the results in the table on the bottom. The canoe had the lowest average at 20, but was fairly repeatable with a small range of 3. The cube had the largest deviations as seen by the range of 11, but it did have the highest single value at 36, although the average was 28. The sphere was also pretty reliable, it has a range of 4, it had a high average of 32, and it was always above 30 pennies. So if I was to do this experiment as a competition, I'd choose the sphere because it's most likely to give me a high number whether I do it once or several times. I've added two columns to the table. So the third one here is the theoretical values that we initially predicted. And then the fourth column is the measured theoretical values that we recalculated after we had measured the boats. If we compare the predictions that we made with the measured volumes to the averages that we got from the plot, we see that all the predictions are within the range of the averages. Overall, we saw that the results depend on how the pennies are loaded into the boat, and our predictions were within the range of the resulting average number of pennies. We learned that the best shape was the sphere because it's the most reliable and had the highest average number of pennies. If you try this experiment at home, let me know how it went in the comments. Thanks for watching and happy sciencing!